I'm going to jump over some of the comparative slides because they've already been uh, used in the balloon debate. So if I jump over them, excuse me. Um, my uh, disclosures, I'm a consultant to Angia Dynamics, um, but we received no funding uh, for our research. Uh, <clears throat> irreversible electroporation is inherently different to the other thermal therapies. Uh, the mechanism of action is a very high powered pulsed electrical uh, pulse that goes across, which cause, causes irreversible holes in the cell membrane. And that's an electron micrograph of uh, one of those holes. So why IRE? Well, I'm going to try and go through all of these uh, in the 10 minutes. It's simple and safe. It's a reliable and universal prostate ablation at any area of the prostate, and it, irrespective of the nature of the prostate. It's able to broaden the field, which has been shown to be necessary in all of our talks. It got, gives good functional and oncological outcomes in, on intermediate term follow-up with low in-field recurrence. It's applicable in the primary and salvage setting. It's repeatable and salvage options are available and seem reasonable. It's easily taught and learnt. It's got some unique aspects in terms of structural preservation and non-thermal, and I'll talk about even the possible immune effect, and it's within our skill set. So it's a short procedure. Um, when I'm doing a training course at the moment, I do four or five in a morning. The, it's not difficult to treat, and here you can see the typical box configuration. Um, I've just got the laser. Oh, there's my pen. I didn't know where that went. It, the, the box configuration, which is on the top, or the, uh, it can be a box and triangle, or it can be two boxes. And uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve, maybe five to ten cases. It's not difficult to learn this technique. There are some tricks making sure you contour to the edges because the recurrences after nano knife therapy is because you're not contouring to the shape of the prostate. So this is a typical, uh, you know, anterior perfect tumour for even for high food, patient, uh, high food believers. So you place the four electrodes and then you start individually putting electricity between each of the pairs. And then if you look at the T1 GAD dynamic image a week later, and we've always done a T1 GAD image at two days after the procedure in all 600 of our patients, which is something that Mark taught me to do. It's a good quality control, and if you're doing a posterior one and the person's got a bit of diarrhoea, it's very reassuring to see there's no edema of the rectum. Safety. Safety has been well established. Originally, we did our initial safety study with Mark Emberton's group and uh, Hash's group. And uh, then s since that time, uh, Jonathan Coleman's published and, of course, uh, Wilhelmine Vandenbos published as well. Um, IRE has very limited, uh, very minimal limitations. Um, I've mentioned the location. I've mentioned calcification, but in brachytherapy cases, there's no problems with the metal. With periurethral, you can put the urethra in the middle of the treatment zone and you will not get a stricture. You might get a slightly prolonged retention. You can treat in an extra capsular way by placing the electrodes close to the edge of the prostate. So you can treat minimal extra capsular disease, which isn't that uncommon with a four plus three and it's not thermal, so there's greater chance of erection recovery, which the randomised control trial of De La Rosette confirmed. So this is Willamine's paper, and this was the original one, 16 patients, ablate, resect. There was no viable cells in any of those 16 patients. And I think this, um, the only other technology which has done this has been Tulsa. They've done an ablate, resect study. There is a low infield recurrence based on our initial 125 patients, all with Gleason 7, 
all of whom had a biopsy at the 12 month mark. And our infield recurrence rate was 2.7. Originally, it was 9.7% before we started tightening the, um, uh, sorry, widening the margins to a minimum of 10 millimetres. It's suitable in all segments. This was a paper that we published on apical patients only. And in those 50 apical patients, the oncological infield recurrence was identical to the general cohort, 2.5%, and we had 2% PAD requirements at 12 months and 0% PAD requirements at 24 months. There's a potential benefit of this, that it preserves tubular structures. So what it does, it doesn't destroy the, and you've got to understand, IRE began in the liver, and it was for non-resectable metastatic cancer, and they were trying to protect the bile duct and the portal vein. And so you could treat with the bile duct involved in the middle of the um, uh, field, and yet you would not get a bile fistula. So it preserves structures. So the endothelial and spoon muscle cells die, but they re recover. So does it allow erection recovery? Well, this is one of the few level one evidences that have been done, recently published by Dilla Rosette's multi-center study of focal versus extended IRE. And what he found was, it's, and it's essentially a quality of life study. He's, uh, he says he's gonna publish the oncological ones, but it was in the days of blind biopsies and it really wasn't well done oncologically. But what was interesting was the sexual function was significantly different in the under six month group in using the EPIC questionnaire, but returned to equal um, in the focal and extended group at the 12 month mark. So it appears that sexual function is recoverable. Our data, so from a um, total group of 530 patients, if you take out the salvage 100 patients and if you take out those with less than 18 month follow up, we had 244 patients for the publication we did in BJUI earlier this year. And it, you can see that the ablation field was, there were lesionectomies, octantectomies, quadrantectomies and hemigland ablations and you can see by the area treated that it was apex, mid, base, anterior, posterior, it was everywhere. But what's interesting and is 42%, oh, sorry, 42 of those patients were um, Gleason 4 plus 3 and um, 17 were Gleason 4 plus 4. So the KP curve out to five years was 79%. So that's freedom from radical treatment. It's, I'll be very clear, a redo was allowed in that group. So that's 79% of patients had radical prostatectomy, radiotherapy or hormone therapy. Sorry, 79% of patients didn't have that. 21% of patients had it. But, and clearly, the group of people that we're treating, you'd expect a metastasis-free survival of 99.6%. Functional outcomes. At baseline, we had 2% of people who um, were essentially dry, but maybe had a bit of post dribble and might have worn a pad, and 2.3% at our last follow-up. Erection function. Baseline, 69%, that dropped to 59% based on uh, the EPIC questionnaire and based on saying yes to question three. Side effects, we had no grade three or four complications and no fistulae. Is it translatable? Recently, John Yaxley, I trained uh, two units in Australia, uh, John Yaxley's unit in Brisbane and Nathan Lorencheck's unit in Melbourne, and John's published his data, and you can see on the left-hand side, smaller numbers, but identical results in terms of biopsy, erections, and continence. I'll pass that because that's been done. Um, because of the interest of time, I'm not going to present our salvage data. We've uh, published two uh, series. One was the FIRE result, which was a multi-centre study, and one was our own data. But essentially, it's about a 60% five-year um, uh, progression-free survival. 
Uh, the side effects, of course, with salvage treatment are higher. Um, salvage radical prostatectomy after primary IRE. This is our data, and when we published this, um, we had no major complications. The negative margin rate was 91%, uh, and both were Gleason 3 with one uh, with minimal uh, you know, positive positivity there. Um, we did have 55% PT3A, uh, but we're really, because I'm the surgeon who's doing this, uh, you know, if, if they fail, they go and get their prostate out. It's not like it's a different group which hold on to the patients for too long and then, of course, you get worse results. We had a very low in-field recurrence rate of, uh, in the radical prostatectomy specimen of 4%. We had 100% continence at, uh, by six months and 96% uh, but that was less than or equal to one pad, but 96% were pad free. Now, um, that's better than our primary data, and I, I, I need to get one or two incontinent patients to sort of muck that up and make it believable. 61% were uh, potent. Is it repeatable? This is not published data, but uh, what we found... Uh, about half the patients were salvageable with a 12-month biopsy with a repeat IRE. Um, so the future perspectives of this at the moment, um, we have, uh, it's getting wider acceptance. We're getting, we're trying to work with better uh, patient selection using PSMA. We've done a study on that and recently published it. Um, we're just about to publish the immune effect of this. We now have an established ethics approved multi-center registry, a couple of randomized trials are in play, and the FDA are awaiting the, uh, I'm sorry, we're awaiting the preserved results. Uh, as you know, NICE recently put this as no longer experimental on the 5th of July. Uh, the immune results are based on histology and blood results, and it does appear that we get a prostate-specific immune response. Maybe it's because it preserves the vasculature of the area. Uh, the multi-centre registries, we've already recruited 43 in this prospectively. Uh, PSMA PET scan, uh, we were wondering whether doing a PSMA PET scan before we did the nano knife might help us appropriately select uh, patients and avoid outfield recurrence, which we sit at 20% at the moment with outfield recurrence. And, uh, the results of the uh, study showed that it did improve our uh, negative predictive value uh, when you did a biopsy and PSMA and MRI, and uh, we think we could halve that from 20% to 10% outfield if this is translated in a prospective study. Um, so this is the study we're doing at the moment to prove that prospectively. It's called the direct study, and that's just open for accrual right as we speak. The preserve study, as you know, has uh, completed its uh, enrolment, and um, I think we're awaiting the results of that. Um, I, I, I had the first 20 patients biopsy sent to me, and that they were all clear. So I think it's going to be a positive study. And then the PRIS study, which is in, the, in Sweden, is doing a randomised study between IRE and radical prostatectomy, uh, functional study. And so in conclusion then, I think focal IRE either in salvage or primary setting may be suitable for men with unilateral localised intermediate risk prostate cancer. I believe that strict follow-up, including biopsy, is still necessary. I don't think PSMA is enough. IRE provides reliable in-field ablation and acceptable medium-term oncological and functional results. It's quick and it's repeatable. It's applicable to all segments and salvage options are, are, are effective. It's got a unique non-thermal way of doing it and there's less collateral damage, potentially uh, an immune effect. Patient selection needs to improve, particularly for the outfield and further trials and long-term registries are essential and are all underway. Thank you for your time.